even have to go anywhere because this is the Talk Beat Jones and uh This is the Talk Beat Jones. He's called him and he is the executive vice president, general manager, and uh, he is the trainer of all that happens here for the staff and um, he and Mr. R.J. is joined at the hip. That's a good thing to do when you got your best friend for life. I am uh, Billy Jones, Dr. Talk, and this is the Talk Beat Jones. And I want to thank you for joining us wherever you may be around the world. Of course, you can pick us up over the Internet, over the uh, Roku box, uh, Internet uh, said that. Of course, the uh, Amazon, or Apple, and your telephone and all other type of social medias that you can pick up this program live and or when we play it again you can pick it up uh, this is, again is a program that we are designing to have that process that situation where people say when we come together this is the program that will be welding us that's w-e-l-d-i-n-g welding us together Regardless of how you feel or what your opinions, what your viewpoints is, we want to hear it. We want to give you a platform to speak your mind here on the Talk Beat Jones. And uh, let's see real quickly who I have my first two callers. And I have another line that's open. That's 313-868-0342. Is that right? 0342 or 46? Hey, he put it. He put it on the screen so my eyes can see it. Uh, what is that again? 0342. All right. So you see it on the screen there, and uh, uh, we'll have, let's see, we have another call. And call, I just want to lock you in. Who am I speaking to, please? Uh, yes, good morning, fellow patriots. Okay, Big Les, hold on, please. And so, family, we have, uh, I can see right now, we have a wonderful group of people that's ready to talk. And uh, before I get into it, why don't we do what we talk about doing? Bringing us together, which means uh, if you have a problem reading and, and, compre and comprehending what you're reading, these folks are going to break it down. How do I know? I'm like you. <laughs> I'm waiting to hear what they have to say on the Talk Beat Jones. And remember, when this show comes on, you're going to be saying, hey, you're going to call your friends. You're going to text your friends. You're going to tell them, this show you've got to watch. Let's start right here. Good morning. Good evening. Whatever time it may be when the show is on the air. But I want to welcome and greet you with love and respect. Good morning, Billy. Good morning. And since I mentioned... Hi, Deputy Chief Amos. Hey, Deputy Chief. And since I mentioned love, you know... Uh, the person that got me into really going inside of myself and looking for that love concept, uh, that's uh, Minister Malik Shabazz, because with all the beatings he took and he still was giving love. So now mm -hmm. I am a love man. Okay. So anybody who calls here, believe me, you will be greeted with love. I don't care if we went to the shed or if we went to the barbershop, as Mr. Hill used to call it. <laughs> You are welcome. And okay. Deputy Chief, I want to welcome you to the Talk Beat Jones show. Thank you for calling, sir. Yeah, yeah. I understand uh, you're putting a, a platform together where uh, we can uh, call in and express our concern. I want to be the designated site that when folks say, I have something to say, I have a secret that I need to talk about what the political folks are doing, what the corporate people are doing, what's happening in my neighborhood, the problems or the progress, however you feel about the political race itself, I want to know. I want this to be the program that breaks it down so that our family in Detroit, of course, and around the world can know for real 
what's going on. That's why I say I'm a media specialist family, and I don't take the right side. I don't take the left side. I don't take the white side, the green side, the sub side. I'm taking the fact that you're calling. So hit me up with what you want to say. Well, there's several, there's several issues that I have that uh, affect the citizens of Detroit. Here's how we'll do that. We'll take you one, and you can get a chance to explore that, and then we'll put you on hold. We'll bring you back. You can go to the next one so that we can get the inter interaction with the other folks. Is that good? That's good. Okay. Talk to me. Well, this issue of uh, the council, well, they were supposed to vote uh, this past week on giving uh, Ford Motor Company $104 million of tax incentives, taxpayers' money, uh, money that could have uh, gone to school, money that could have gone to neighborhoods and things like that. I mean, you know, this is insane when you, when you know that uh, Ford Motor Company has $16.8 billion dollars cash on hand, and we have this, uh, all the prices that we have in Detroit that don't make sense. I mean, you know, for a motor company, they could straighten the uh, funding to straighten out the water crisis in Detroit schools, but uh, nobody's saying anything about that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I feel that uh, uh, whenever the council do vote on it, and keep in mind in reality, the decision has already been made, okay? When you say the decision has already been made, would you explain to the family why you feel that way? Well, it's, uh, it's, it's the super players, if you will. The mayor, the de facto mayor, uh, Dan Gilbert, the illegist, Susan Paskey, corporate, and uh, developers that uh, what we call taking uh, corporate welfare. Okay. And so once, once white folks make their decision, then they come to the black, predominantly black council and say, hey, this is the way we want you to vote, and you will vote this way. Mm. So the council just rubber stamps what uh, Masa says we're supposed to do. Absolutely. Hold and on, please. So, Hold, oh, go ahead, finish your thought, and I'll and, come back uh, to you. And my solution to it, my immediate solution, is that... Uh, Folk like uh, Dieta Wilcoxon, Robert Davis, Eric Williams, with their legal expertise, they should be crafting the language for a recall of any council member that vote to give this money to Ford Motor Company. Oh. And here's the reason. I mean, you know, this don't make any sense. Oh, oh, okay, but, but hold, hold, hold on, hold on. I want to bring you back, and you can go okay. through that further, okay? Hold on. Don't go anywhere. Les, I'm coming to you shortly, okay? Mary? Yes. From Oakland, California. And I must let folks know that Mary uh, Bugs from Oakland, California, she calls in. And uh, Mary Bugs uh, was a stellar talk show host on Sobe Television. As you see behind me, that man, the shorter man, that's Mr. Chuck Charles Johnson, and uh, the taller guy, the, the handsome guy with the beard and holding the microphone. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> that is uh, Billy <laughs> Jones. <laughs> Go right ahead, Mary. <laughs> One thing, Chuck wouldn't have liked you calling him the shorter I man. I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and, and see, Chuck Chuck is not like uh, Mr. Henry Tyler, who just come and give you a little small, so, uh, soft tap upside the head, you know, behind uh -huh. the head. Chuck Johnson is known, uh, this is before the Me Too movement, which has nothing to do with women because I'm a guy and other guys, that if Chuck had a statement that he really wanted to make to you, he'd hit you in the stomach. <laughs> Unexpectedly, he would punch you in the stomach. And I remember, the, you remember the guy, the, the tall youngster named Chuck Johnson also? Uh -huh. Chuck Johnson hit him so hard, almost brought him to his knees. And the guy was about, what, 6'2", and he weighed yeah. about 225, 230, and Chuck brought him to his knees. <laughs> but anyway, Mary, go ahead, please. Uh, good morning to everybody. Let's start to get uh, disabled. 
because uh, they need your help. And to the young man who just called. Mary, can uh, you speak a little louder? David. Can you speak a little louder, Mary? Okay. You see, you're to being the young sexy. Man who, who just called. You have to get your fellow black people to get together in Detroit. Yes. That's it. Yes. That's the bottom line. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You can't just let uh, white people lead the way all the time. That's right. It's That's just right. the wonderful liberals who hate you. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying, get your act together and that's all the way around the country well there is one thing that i want you to comment on because you're in oakland you're in california yes. and uh i'm going to let my host my guest host speak but because you're there and one of the subjects that i'm going to bring up is the uh the legalizing of marijuana <laughs> and um the fact that they got it medical but they are now going to legalize the recreational you're there in Oakland where they've gone through legalizing marijuana, they've gone through legalizing recreational marijuana, and i got some questions that you may help us in Detroit to answer, okay? Okay. Hold on. Hey, Big Les. Good morning, fellow Good. Petras and the ones uh, Marion, uh original famous. Uh-huh. Uh, hey, I apologize for not being there, Billy, but my car died on me. It was unexpected, uh, unexpected financial Whim that you know, oh, I heard, I heard I about, love my little I, car I heard, I heard it, about your car. Head. It's okay. okay. That's, that's so, good. Uh, I, I want to say that Mary is right. Yes. You know, we keep going down the same rabbit hole and we need to stop this. Okay. Yes. The, the rabbit hole is leadership. We need to have better leadership. And I saw that when I was at a meeting uh, on the East side, when it was, I know it could have been over a thousand people there and wow. all of them said no to the hands farm, but we got it anyway. It's a problem not only here, it's a problem in America. We don't have people uh, in office that's listening to the people. The people are speaking, but the leadership is not leading the way the people are asking them to be led. And the problem we need to have is leadership. And the first order of business is to get rid of Public Act 436, the, the emergency manager law. That's the first thing, order of business, so we can have home rule, so we can have a, a real fight without the state interfering in our, in our, in our city. Hold, hold, let me ask you a quick question before I go to uh, anything further. The act that you're speaking of would be the repealing of the what number? Public Act 436. Everybody, everybody. Hold, 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 hold on, be, hold on, before, hold on, hold on, hold on before you go. Big Les, hold on before you go further. That's the act that allows for the emergency, what now? Emergency manager to come in, take power of our elected officials. Okay, now, did the citizens do a petition to make sure that the emergency manager act was blocked? And, well, that's uh, what I was just telling you, Billy. I, wait, let me, I let, okay, you. but hold on just a moment. Mm -hmm. See, it's a process that we're educating everyone else, okay. not just All me right. or you. So didn't the citizens put together the re act to repeal the Emergency Management Act and Snyder and the Republican Party put this in the act round. together? So now you're mm -hmm. saying that the act that has made sure that the uh, uh, governor can place an emergency manager wherever he, he, uh, uh, he or she chooses that you're telling the citizens that we need to, again, put together a petition to repeal this act? Is that what you're telling us? I'm telling you any elected official uh, that's not working well, or uh, for uh, the repeal of Public Act 436, uh, they don't need to be in, in office. And okay. that's the question I ask in all the elected, uh, election forum to anybody. Okay, hold on so, now. So. Uh, Deputy Chief? Hey. You're back. Okay. So, like I say, Billy, the, the, this thing about this money for Ford uh, and Dan Gilbert, I mean, when you look at the amount of money that's, that's going to these folks combined, Gilbert, Ford, uh, Illich for the arena, and then Tom Gore, Pistons facility, that's over a billion dollars, to be exact. It's one billion two hundred seventeen and a half billion dollars. Is that is that tax exempt money? That's tax 
incentive money that belong to the people. However, Over the people will be paying. Over a period, that's okay. going to multiply. And let's face it, most of us will be gone in 35 years. Okay. Are you are you saying, and just a question, because I don't know what's in your mind, and it's your statement, so I'm just asking the question for me and the people, yeah. that the public will be paying, whereas Gilbert and uh, the other persons that you named will not be paying taxes on their developments the way other folks do? Exactly. The developer will not be paying taxes. That's the revenue that the city of Detroit would not receive over a 35-year period. Can you tell us why the, uh, the citizens or the mayor and the city council would go through this? And to my understanding, this situation with Dan Gilbert was uh, uh, one of those real quickies presented. Well, go ahead. When, he, when he first introduced it uh, in Lansing, it, it failed. And uh, he tried to bring it in, and they were on break, uh, winter break, Christmas break, or whatever, didn't pass. Uh, it came up uh, a year later, well, in the following year, and it passed. And what he did, he went up to Lansing, was people went up to Lansing with a suitcase full of money, started giving people money to vote in favor of his uh, tax benefit. Now, when you say he, are you talking about the mayor or are you talking about Gilbert? Uh, Dan Gilbert. Okay. Okay. There's, uh, if you go online, you'll see where uh, all the representatives in Lansing was paid off. <laughs> all of them. Now, they uh, got to be Hogan careful. Young, all the sitting, all the sitting. Wait, uh, what name did you name? Comey uh, Young was one. Hold on, so hold, hold on. Now, you know, we. I'm gonna let you finish, but now you throw, uh, you put Coleman Young's name out there. You're saying that Coleman was paid off too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now remember in now. Every, let me let, let me let me do this real quickly, and I'll let you finish. I want to let folks know that on the talk, B. Jones, the opinions that are expressed by the callers that called into this station is not the views or the perspective of this station nor do I say that I endorse the statements that are made by the callers to this station so that when you hear what you've just heard, that is the statement made by the caller. And if you're called on that, I'm sure that he'll be able to respond. Is that correct, sir? Absolutely. Okay. Handle your business, Billy. Handle your business. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hold, hold on just a minute. We'll come back to yeah. you. Mary? Yes, I'm still here. Okay. Uh, Forgot to go pretty soon. Okay, well, let, me, well let, me, let, me, let, me, let me just do a little quickie because uh, I'll come to less next, but, and then we'll clear the line so someone else can get in if necessary. Yeah. But here's quickie. Um, how is it, do you remember when uh, Oakland had all of those dispensaries like liquor stores? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, Oakland had to put together another ordinance so they could close down some of those uh, uh, dispensaries, correct? Right. Um, so now, what is the situation with the workforce? Are the people able to smoke marijuana and uh, be able to have their jobs? Uh, uh, I'm not sure if Oakland has a lot of jobs that people have to be tested for. Yeah, I'm sure they have jobs that got to be tested for marijuana. And uh, do they test them at random? And if they are working and they are tested at random, what happens? Do you know, have any idea? No, not about these jobs, no. But let me say this. Okay. I'm all for medical marijuana. Okay. But I'm not for this mess where they get to smoke anywhere, anytime. And smell it, that crap. I mean, I'm going to ask people of California, of the world, do you really need marijuana to make you happy? I'm putting it out there. Do you need marijuana to make you happy or any other drug? Because now we're having more accidents. I'm talking about car accidents. 
Yes. And we're going to have more of everything. This drug stuff is not by the hand. Well, let me have your comment on this, is that I have a, uh, a, a, a report that says more teenagers are vaping yes, marijuana than previously thought survey shows. One in 11 students in middle and high school admit to having used pot and e-cigarettes. What do you think about that? It doesn't surprise me. Yes, it, it is happening. In your old part and every other thing. It's got, I don't know. They should have got rid of the cigarette factories. But if they get rid of cigarettes, here comes the black market. <laughs> and more machine gun tell it. I'm just saying, people, wake up. Stop doing this. I mean, just be healthy, wealthy, and wise, and vote. Thank you, Billy. Thank you, and I appreciate you very much, and I'll see you back next Sunday. All right, then. Bye now. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. Big Les and yes, family, uh, for those who want to call in, uh, we do. We have a line that's open, and uh, you can call and you can join the conversation this morning, this evening, whatever time that we may be here. But you can join us. Go ahead, Big Les. Well, I guess uh, maybe my point was missed about leadership because everything changes when leadership makes it change. And if you don't have people with the, will, with the willingness to make things change, then things will always remain the same. That's the bottom line. Until we get control of our uh, uh, our uh, political system. Now, if anybody out there that's got access, you know, they'd like to read uh, December uh, 16th, 2002, in the Detroit News, there was an expose about uh, uh, McNamara. Uh, he gave an A to Z plan on how he was going to take over the politics of Wayne County, and he has executed that plan. Now he has Mike Dugan uh, uh, representing his, his plan right now. Well, isn't 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 Mac is isn't wait isn't isn't Mac isn't and city hey, council ain't nothing uh, gonna change until the people at the table change. That's why uh, Councilwoman uh, Joan watching that because she didn't have no backup. Nobody was watching it. She was a uh, she was uh, like uh, Gary Cooper at high noon. She was out there by herself. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I agree, I agree, and um, we had an opportunity to see how the system and how her fellow uh, colleagues on the council was treating her as well. And so we as a people, again, we have had an opportunity to see how that council was functioning. We can see how that council is functioning today with the replacement council people that have joined the, the council. And what do we have with this new council by districts? I do not hear anyone talking about a situation that is going on in their various districts. We're talking about the people. And if you can't get some resolution with your council person or their uh, office staff who's supposed to be there to take care of your wants and needs, then why and what is the function of the city council people that are erect, uh, erect, uh, elected by uh, uh, who are your citywide council persons. So they don't have to get involved. They do not get involved with district situations. Is that the way when they set up the uh, district council or the district election by districts, is that the way it was set up? But I tell you what, after I come back, after I'm going to exhale for a moment, I see that I still have Big Les and I have uh, Deputy Chief on and Family, if you care to call, if you care to join us, if you want to be a spokesperson for you, your group, or your community, or your, your household, then you can call us at the numbers on the screen, and we'll bring you into the mix. But right now, I think it's about time for me to take that, uh, take that little exhale so I can stay on an even keel. So whatever you do, you have time to tell your friends and your family, you can call Talk Beat Jones. Be right back after I exhale for a moment, okay? Let me do this meditation style. Mm. You don't have to go anywhere because this is the 
talk beat Jones and uh This is the Talk Beat Jones. Bon Appetit, Elegant Catering. We now deliver. Pre-order your dinners today. Most wanted platter. Visit our website, bonappetitelegantcatering.com. Barbecue rib dinners, we now deliver. Shrimp dinners, we now deliver. Fried chicken dinners, we now deliver. Lamb chop dinners, we now deliver. Fish dinners, we now deliver. Surf and turf dinners at Bon Appetit, we now deliver. Give us a call, 313-444-5048 have to go anywhere because this is the talk beat Jones and uh this is the talk beat Jones Feeling real good, like you, I know, because we're breathing, so we know we're feeling good. Hello, this is Talk B. Jones. I'm Billy Dr. Talk Jones, and you're live. Uh, can we talk to me? Hey, this is Deputy Chief. Hello, Deputy Chief. Yeah. Yeah, Billy, that particular uh, session in, in Lansing where Gilbert Sanders spoke up with a suitcase full of money, that was the tax incentive uh, financing bill, commonly known as TIF. And like I said, uh, I don't have that, uh, that sheet in front of me of, of the, all the uh, representatives that were paid, and I'll bring that forward uh, very probably on your next show, if, if it's okay with you. Oh, cool. yeah, because like I said, truth is something that is empowering Absolutely. Because when you're telling the truth and you got the documentation, regardless of, again, whom you are, where you are, the truth is the truth. It's kind of like they tell you that frail nature of memory might be playing a role in the Kavanaugh matter. Expert, experts warn confidence. Don't, go, don't, don't, don't lose your chain of thought. No. Expert warn confidence is no guarantee of truth. She says he sexually assaulted her. He denies it. Is somebody deliberate lying? Not necessarily. Experts say that because of how memory works, it's possible that both Supreme Court nominee uh, Kavanaugh and uh, Ms. Ford, the woman who says a drunken Kavanaugh pinned her to a bed and groped her at a party when they were teenagers in the early 1980s, believe what they say. And which one of them believed his or her version more strongly is no tip-off to what really happened. Uh, confidence is not a good guide to whether or not someone is telling the truth, said a psychologist psychology professor at Temple uh, told CNN somebody's mixed up. Experts say a person's memory is not like a video recorder perfectly capturing an objective record of everything that happens for later retrieval. Now I feel that this conversation of this particular situation is set up for them to disbelieve this woman and saying that her memory is not to be believed. It can't, it's not accurate. But anyway, go right ahead, sir. Yeah. Uh, you know, not only will Ford Motor Company or Village or any of the, of the developers that, that would get money in this fashion, not only will it be the tax incentive, uh, $100 million, $400 million or whatever, they will collect the uh, taxes that the workers on the project would normally pay, like their payroll taxes, yes. employee taxes, uh -huh. that go to the city and the state. Yes. Dan Gilbert and the developers, they collect that, okay? 
Uh, any that's, business, that's the way, is that the way the agreement is set up so that they collect this money themselves? Exactly. Exactly. And see, this is why, Billy, I tell people, do your research. Pull up tax incentive finance. It spells it out. Okay? You know, uh, in California, they had this system when Jerry Brown was the uh, governor. Okay? And when Jerry Brown, when he came in, it was in place. And when he did an audit a year later to see the effect it had on the state of California, because it was 400 such plans in place, he immediately got with his legislature, and they abolished that thing because the state was losing so much money. Now, is this doing Jerry Brown the old man, or is this Jerry Brown the one who also ran for president during his first term because he... Uh, actually was a two-time governor, term limited out, yeah. and then came back later after becoming, going through the system and being in these different offices representing the government, and then came to Oakland and became the mayor of Oakland, and he changed the system in Oakland from whereby being the mayor was more a ceremonial type of position as opposed to having power. But when Jerry Brown was letting the folks know that he was going to run for mayor, that system was changed whereby the mayor became the king and was able to make the rules and regulations for the city of Oakland, California. So that's clear. Yes, that's sir. That's the Jerry Brown. Oh, that's the Jerry Brown. Go right there, sir. Yeah. And so, like I say, I mean, it's, it's more to it than what people are hearing, okay? Even the workers that are working on the project, Okay, even the suppliers for material, okay, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They, there is a such thing as a material tax, okay? That money will go to, to Illich, the developers, for. Wow. And then on top of that, any, you know, in the, in the footprint of that development, there, there's a radius, if you will, or if you want to get in street terms, it's an area. Okay, so if you have a business in that footprint of that development, your business tax that would normally go to the city and the state go to for the Illages and Gilbert. Hold, hold on, that's, that's very interesting. Hold on, so give us a chance to digest that, please. Les? Yes. Um, uh, let I, me let me address that uh, uh, issue that y'all talking about. Please it's do. The issue y'all pretty much making my case for me. You know, you talk about Jerry Brown, who was the leader. Uh, you talk about the you know people in the legislature that voted uh, uh, Dan Gilbert's way. The power is in legislation, and if you don't have people in there that has your point of view sitting at the table, then we'll never get anywhere. So um, you know. They have the power because they have the machine. And this machine started, you know, in around 2002. Well, well, I read it. It started before that, I'm sure. But the power is in their machine with the Dugan machine, and he has the people that he can, he can control on the council because they rubber stamp everything he says. So until we get a people uh, uh, like John Watson on there, uh, people like uh, Monica Lewis Patrick, uh, uh, Maureen Taylor, the people that speak for the people, they're working for the people, uh, then we're going to keep on talking about uh, what they're doing. And, and I don't talk about what they're doing because I know they're not doing anything for the people until well, we let, make let the me, change. Let, let, me ask you, let me ask you a question. Represent let, the people. Okay, but let me ask you a question. Now, the folks that you just named, one is an ex-council person. The... Uh, one is a activist through the Michigan Welfare Rights, whom was uh, a candidate for uh, city council many years ago. The other person ran for office as well and was not successful. Now, you picked two of the three names that have not served in government as a leader person who have an activist type person or a person that represent a group that reaches out to help folks. Why did you do that? 
Well, because we have to have people on in office that reflect the, the needs of what we need in society. We just can't have all lawyers on there. I mean, what, what, I mean, I, it's just important that they know the law, but still we need people that understand science, uh, uh, environmental issues like the water. We need people that of different uh, yokes of, of understanding to, to make our society work a lot better. Why are those and, and why, why are those folks different. why are less are those folks that you mentioned like that and the fact that and I agree with you by the way I agree with you but what is it as we're talking about coming together what is it going to take us as a people to have folks be strong enough to stand up put their life on hold to explain to the community and be vetted as to how and why they would be the best persons to be elected to represent us and if the fashion of folks who stepped up and made some noise and folks say yeah this person that person should run but they had no real quote backing how can we find a person that has the uh, stiffness in their back to stand up and to get elected hold on please just a moment I'll bring you back and you'll be able to finish Deputy Chief? Yes, sir. Um, you know, my mind is on that that we're speaking of right here, but also about the schools and the water and uh, who is responsible for going through the whole summer and not having the water tested so it could have been repaired and uh, what's happening with our children in schools and other things. Uh, can you Stay on point with what you thought. We have time to come back to that, but that's what's kind of running through my head as well. Go right here, sir. Yeah. And, and so, Hold on, Carl, uh, I'll get again, to you. Billy, I mean, like this, this money that's going to the developers, that, that money initially is taken from the, the schools across the state of Michigan. Now, you got, <laughs> you got council members sitting up here talking about uh, when they had money going to uh, the Pistons uh, practice facility. You had Mary Sheffield talking about, oh, no, uh, after, after she got pushed back from us, the people, then she comes out and she want to have community meetings and try to explain that the money was not coming from the school fund, and that's a lot, okay? When you talk to legislators, when you talk to the economists, when you read, you see that this money, the first place the money comes from is the educational fund, okay? And so for 35 years that the developer is getting this, uh, enjoying this tax break, we can't do nothing with our schools. Mm. with our schools in Detroit for 35 years. Wow. Okay? Wow. And this is why, I mean, like I tell anybody, you ain't got to take my word for it. Read for yourself. Again, it's tax increment finance. It's right there on Google. It's been around since, if I remember correctly, uh, the early 70s, late 60s. Hold on, we'll come back to that, but I also want to go through this um, this thing that I heard about uh, uh, this uh, agreement, this uh, B. Oh, uh, community benefit agreement. Yes, B, and yeah. they're talking. They're okay. talking about that, and you. Well, I'll let you explain how we are looking at that as a people. Hold on, please. Hi, family. You're new. Can I get your first information that you want to? share with us this morning, this evening, whatever time yes, you may be calling. Good morning. Hey, I good morning. I just signed in, and I'm enjoying your show this Thank you. morning. Thank you. Uh, I agree with the uh, taxes being extracted, and uh, I like for people to look up the CAFA. CAFA Swindle will tell you how your taxes are being extracted from and put into offshore accounts and um, wow. stock market exchange. These cartels that control the money controls the politics as well as the pulpits. Your election tampering is why people get in or don't win. Okay. So that's it to me in a nutshell. 
I want to thank you for being uh, with me today and hope that I'll have you in the future, okay? Thank you. Thank you. Love you. Bye-bye now. Uh, Big Les? Yeah, uh, Sylvia was right about the, you know, pile of tricksters, you know. Uh, see, we keep getting everything confused here, you know. It's all about leadership. That's why they go and, and put their money into politics so they can control these guys. We have to have a pe- a person like John Watson was never bought. She didn't care how much money. It is people like you know, Roy McCallum, too, who, you know, who, if you stand up for the people, you're going to get elected like Coleman Young Sr. did, okay? It, it's been corruption in politics since this thing started way back when, okay? We can't do nothing about the corruption. But read to what McNamara said. He said when he come in and want to control the politics, he gave the money to the preachers. And that's what's happening. If these preachers are standing up, give, feed the false information to their congregations and to the people in the public. Uh, and, and this is what we have here now. We have chaos and, and, and disorder and distrust in, in our community. And it's not going to go away until we get people out there who, like, who has established themselves. They have to establish themselves. They work establish themselves to, to, uh, to the, through the people. How do you get preachers, ministers, that basically have the connections, because some of them are fortunate to have known some of the major players in the political ranks today when they were younger so they know that they have the connection quote with that person to allow them to get uh food grant monies uh food delivery monies uh operations to bring jobs the operations to uh do various different things get monies to pay their uh folk uh, the sewer bills, the water bills, the electric bills, that they can help. So this makes them real good to some of their church persons with them. Uh, so how do you get a preacher or minister to not accept these particular uh, things that they feel is helping the community, helping the people that attend their church or other folks in the community? Well, how do you how do you tell a man to have integrity or, or not to have integrity, Billy Jones? That's up to them in a personal manner. That's your you, you know that's who you want to be. Do you want to be a man of integrity and, and, and stand up and not and refuse money? Because I remember it was a guy at the station. Uh, I think he was a Reverend Redmond. Uh, he had a show on that air, and Kwame Kilpatrick you know asked him to work for him. But when he found out that you know it wasn't up to his uh, standards of, of, of so he left I, and I, re, I respect him that's why I say if you standing up for the people and you have integrity it shows if you don't it shows too okay so let's go to Grassley aid resigns after report of alleged harassment the communications advisor accused by former co-workers so we're talking about the man that is heading up this investigation or this leading this panel uh, for the person that's running for Supreme Court, of, of the nomination of, of Kavanaugh. And the man that's running everything in the hearings, uh, Chuck Grossley, his person is the person we're talking about. The person's name is Garrett Ventre served as a communication advisor to Grassley, helping the Judicial Judiciary Committee with the Supreme Court nomination of Judge Brett Kavanaugh, who has himself been accused of sexual assault. Ventry did not immediately respond to a message seeking comment, and spoken for Grassley did not respond immediately to, e- uh, to the emails. NBC News and the Washington Report re- uh, reported that Ventry denied the sexual harassment allegations but resigned from the committee so as not to distract from the GOP push for Kavanaugh's confirmation. So this person that you saw or could see with Grossley in this uh, Grossley, Grossley, whatever the white guy's name, the wonderful, powerful person. Um, I, know, I know you're talking about Mr. Grassley. See, yes. And that's the problem, Billy Jones, that we have. We keep, we, we, we keep talking about people that are, are on one side of the fence, then on the other side of the fence. Uh, either you're going to stand for what you believe in 
or, or not. And see, these guys don't stand for anything because they own side. One minute they they uh, for compliment, you know, for confirmation, and the, and the next minute they're not for confirmation. You know, when it's when it's a different president. So to me, their word don't mean anything. And I don't have time to talk about people that don't that word that don't mean anything to me. Okay, hold on. Sir and family, yeah, you have time to call. You have still have an opportunity to call and voice your thought, put out your opinion. Remember, whatever you have to say, it's valuable. It's your thought. It's your opinion. It's the way you feel. It's the way your heart is pumping. It's the way your mind is directing you to speak. No one can stop you from expressing how you feel on the talk beat Jones. As long as you ain't, you're not cussing, you're all right. Excuse me. Let me keep it straight up. You're all right. My mother told me stop that all right stuff. <laughs> Go ahead, uh, uh, sir. Yeah, Billy, you, uh, you mentioned community benefit agreement. Yes. Uh, I find it very interesting that folk like Reverend Holly, uh, Councilman Scott Benson, and the majority of the council voted for Duggan's plan We'll call, community I'll get to you. benefit agreement, and mm -hmm. that was Proposal B, okay? Proposal, the people had Proposal A, and we were telling the community on this station and other stations that, hey, we need Proposal A passed, and we gave the reasons why. Now, I find it interesting, a year, year and a half later, the council, uh, they're saying that the plan that they push is n it needs reform. Mm. See, okay. And you can now, see now, that now, in now, the now, Detroit, now, take a moment. Uh, take, take a moment and break that down so that everybody can understand what you just said. Because not all of us went to college. Not all well, of us this, had time this, to this study. Is just, this elementary, Billy. Really. Well, that's what I want. Yeah. Okay, what it was, uh, the community, the people, we were saying that, hey, we don't find well, developers coming in with uh, new development. We don't mind them using our tax dollars, but we, the people, we should get something out of it. True, okay? true that. Like job training. Uh, uh, we should get... Uh, to cook the uh, developer to help with our schools, things of that nature, help with the infrastructure, help with our bus system. Those are all of the, some of the ingredients or elements of a successful community benefit agreement. There's 150 across the country. And so the uh, Scott Benson carried Mike Duggan's water like a little boy Okay, and he he pushed proposal B, and proposal B had a threshold of seven hundred and some million, and the people were saying no, we should have a threshold less than that, and it was some like three hundred and some. This way, you could capture more from the developers because uh, it's not too many developers that have the money that the Illages and Gilbert had. Because of my time restraint, can you wrap that particular up in a minute? Because I have two, I need to go back to my new caller as well as Les, and then okay. I wanna, want you to close okay. out. So the bottom line is we need to uh, promote your show. We can talk on these issues uh, to form cities, and as Les said, it's a leadership problem. And, you and mentioned we need to be looking for people that's going to have understanding that you got to work with corporate and the people. But you just can't work with corporate and say the heck with the people. All right, hold you on. Hold on. No. no, I was saying hold on, please. Thank you. Yeah. New caller. Hello. You, you're live. you got to talk to me. I don't have but a few minutes. Talk to me. And the chief that we people who are stronger to uh, that 
we need to be done. For you, example, you, you, you're, cra- you're breaking up. I can't understand what you're saying. Is it your phone? Hold on. Can you hear me better now? Yes, please. Okay. Uh, Bill Shuley is the Attorney General, and let me tell you what he could have done to help us with 436. The Attorney General has uh, some get investigative power, including the power to investigate allegations of election fraud and complaints for the removal of public officials. He also uh, can repress grand jury investigations in the state. He can pass on legislation that's passed like 436. We, after it's passed, he can give what is called an attorney general opinion. And I went to my legislator, whom I will not name, and asked him to ask for an attorney general opinion on 436. And the answer was, well, you know he's a Republican. Thank you. And, and, and <laughs> he won't do it. But he's a Republican. But now he's running for governor. And he's running for governor as a Republican with the fact that he is replacing a Republican governor, which is why he chose not to attack when everyone was talking about the fact that Governor Snyder should go to jail. You noted that, as I said some time ago, that he was not going to go after Snyder because his aspiration was to be the governor and if he was a Republican that went after a Republican governor, then his aspirations to run as a Republican would be dashed because the Republican Party would turn on him. Got to let, 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 let you run. I gotta, you gotta. need to know. We need to send people to the legislature okay. that know how to get around some of these uh, roadblocks okay. that are put up by, by these people. I agree now, with one you. One more and I, I'll no, I got to let you go. Thank you. Les, we get down on time. Yeah, I understand. Uh, I hope I hope that was my friend Sam Black who knows. Was that Sam? What he's talking about. You know it's why Sam I didn't Black know if that was Sam? Because he always comes in and says, "My wise and progressive friend." If that was Sam, I'm well, sorry. I Sam. don't know because the phone had broken up, so we couldn't really hear him the first part of his conversation. Okay. So uh, I, I agree with Sam that you know uh, Bill shooting, and I, and I like to uh, say that I, I, I don't know. For sure, but I just saw a name, Bill Schuette in Midland, that uh, backed the uh, public at 436. And uh, so, I mean, not back, public, he, the emergency manager law. So yes. uh, I don't know. I haven't done my research to see if that's the same Bill Schuette from Midland uh, that, uh, that orchestrated and been a part of the original uh uh public act, US 10 or whatever it okay, was called. Okay, I, I, got, I got 30 seconds and I got to go. Okay, well... Listen, I want to appreciate you that you let me sit in on the show. Uh, you know, I, I get back with you. You got to uh, give me a call. You got my phone number. I think I lost yours when I lost the contact. Well, I'm going to give my, my phone, you, you my stay, new phone. You, you stay with, you continue to watch at the end. I'll get my number. Got to let you go. Okay. Thank you. All appreciate right. it. Hope to see okay. you next yeah, week. Take mm-hmm. care. I hope right. to hear from you next week. But stay on the oh, phone. Oh, yeah, you will. Okay. Uh, you got to close out. Hey, it was great, Billy. I believe if we stay on this track. You have the best show on any station dealing with uh, the issues that affect us in Detroit. Keep up the good work. Well, we're looking to receive the support and uh, see if we can not expand the Talk Beat Jones show into another version of a half an hour show again that would be on point as we're trying to, not trying, as we're doing the coming together bringing us together because too many people have always had wonderful great thoughts and it's always when we come together we're doggone it we can come together we can bring it together over the airways and we can work to come together not stay negative not to go left and right if that's what you need to do to get things corrected we can do that but we're looking to work together send in your check donations cashiers check to 160 victor street is that four eight 48203 and you can send that check in the name of Billy Jones or you can send it in the name of TV33 and in the memo column put it for Billy Jones and the office will take care of it because we're looking to try to get enough money to expand my brand for another half an hour twice a month 
So again, uh, Deputy Chief. Yes, sir. Uh, looking forward to hearing from you next week and other family members out there. Remember, if you've been in love with me, call me. You've been, if you've been against me for whatever the reasons or transgressions I may have committed to you, I apologize. Let's come back together. Let's get together on the Talk B. Jones. I'm Billy Jones, and um, uh, I want to say thank you. Goodbye, uh, 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 Deputy Chief. See you back okay. next week. Mm -hmm. And uh, family, call me, 313-412-3111. Once again, that number is 313 412 Three one one one. You need that easy silk hair and skin line products, especially you guys who are wearing them full beards. I looked around, everybody's going wearing a beard. Well, we've got that beard cream. Okay. Three one three four one two three one one one. Gotta go. We love, respect. Bye y'all. Take care. You wouldn't have to go anywhere because this is the Talk Beat Jones and uh This is the Talk Beat Jones.